Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, there's a, a difference between when you do something on accident versus when you do it on purpose. In sports, accidental or incidental contact, that's no penalty, but smacking somebody upside the head on purpose, well, that will result in a penalty or a foul. Uh, legally speaking, the law recognizes the difference between on purpose and on accident. For instance, the difference between involuntary manslaughter and premeditated murder. A little lighter example would be one thing to accidentally forget to talk to somebody, be it be a whole other story if you just gave them the cold shoulder and made sure they knew you weren't talking to them. Now, I don't know about you, but typically when I think of the difference between accidental and on purpose, I'm considering negative actions. But our readings consider it in a different sort of light. As we've kind of been over, serving others is really a constant theme in the New Testament. And we're looking at this Advent serving from different perspectives of different New Testament authors. John focused particularly on love. We love because he first loved us, and so we love others. Luke and Paul focused on our bodies that are called to service, not just in part, but in whole. It's not just a thing we do. Service is who we are. Today, we'll look at Peter and Mark's gospel. Now, many scholars think that Mark actually used Peter as a primary source for the gospel of Mark. Peter's, whether or not that's what happened, Peter's letters and Mark's gospel share a very straightforward, no-nonsense, fast-paced style. They get to the point quickly. And Peter is very focused on living. Now, Peter certainly believes that Jesus is the Christ, and he strongly desires to be, to be loyal to, to Jesus and to Yahweh. It's clear to Peter that Jesus is the true son of Yahweh, the Messiah, the fulfillment of the scriptures. But it's, it's almost like it's so obvious to Peter and so true that he doesn't really spend a lot of time arguing for it. Instead, he's ready to get on with living, living out his faith and putting Jesus' instructions into practice. So, um, whereas Paul focuses more on theology, um, the majority of what Peter is talking about in 1 Peter is about living. What should our life look like? Well, Peter starts off saying, well, we should be holy, we should be different from the world, because God is different, he is holy, and he's called us to live like him. That's just the way it should be, it's sort of like Peter asserts. And in chapter 4, he, he continues with this talk about living as God's people. And that's where he talks about the difference between living with a purpose um, or living accidentally, you might say. He starts by saying that sin, you know, whatever kind of sin it might be, the drunkenness, sexual immorality, idolatry, or just generally kind of being out of control, these are all things, Peter says, we should just leave behind us. Get rid of all sin. And Peter, as is typical for Peter, wants to aggressively and decisively put sin behind us. So he says, kill it. Get rid of it. Your attitude towards sin should be that it's dead to you. Just leave it behind you entirely. After all, he says, those who live for the purpose of satisfying the sinful flesh, well, they're going to have to answer to Yahweh. He says, you all, we all, we used to sin, it's in our past, but that's where it should stay. Just leave it there in the past. Peter wants us to live with a purpose, and it's uh, good for us to think about that. What's the purpose of our life? What are we here for? Well, there may be a lot of different um, answers. Maybe something with sometimes we, we're trying to find out. What, what am I here for? Um, one way to find out how we're living is thinking about our schedule. What do you arrange your schedule around? What takes priority? What do you make time for? Perhaps for all of us, there should be, um, for all of you, there should be a little comfort in that question because I imagine that you must be at least battling to make Christ a priority if you're here listening to this. But all of us, there are moments or stretches where our priorities get out of whack. Every day, in fact, we are tempted to overindulge in this or that. We consider getting what we want 
more important than what others need. Well, Peter gives us a good reminder that these types of attitudes and actions are deadly, though. Dead to us, in other words. They, they can't really offer us life. They just give us a little bit of fleeting pleasure that's here, and then it's gone. They end up making neither us nor anyone else around us any better. Sin, almost, sin always leads to hurt. It leads to pain. And it points others towards uh, to others, not towards Christ, but away from him. And from Peter's perspective, anything that does that, you just might as well get rid of. Peter reminds us that we have something much more worthwhile, valuable, and honorable to live for. We should not live accidentally. And, and what I mean by living accidentally is simply letting life happen to us without putting any thought into what we're doing um, just going with whatever we feel like. And human beings, that's how we tend to live when we, we don't think. We sort of act a, not that different from, from animals, you know. We might avoid things that are painful or, or keep coming back to what feels good. But, but the Bible tells us that we're, we're more than just animals or beasts. We're created in the image of God with a, a divine purpose far more meaningful than simply animal pleasures. Peter doesn't, you know, like I said, typical, it doesn't seem to me that Peter tries that hard to convince us of this. It's just how it is in Peter's mind. It's simply better to live according to holy, uh, living holy, God-pleasing lives. It's the way to go. In Mark's gospel, shifting gears a little bit, Jesus talks about purpose, He tells the disciples more specifically both what his purpose is and also, in general terms at least, what their purpose is. And now this purpose that God calls us to is is different than the sort of purpose we naturally gravitate towards, though. And if we look at, you know, we've been listening to John and Peter talking about service, but our gospel lesson today is kind of funny in that uh, John's original attitude, and probably Peter's lumped in there too, their attitude or perspective on service is, um, shall we say, not yet uh, reached where Christ wants it to be. Neither Peter nor John thought the, the kind of way that they both will talk about later on. Um, in Mark chapter 10, uh, John and his brother James are much more concerned with power and privilege than they are with love or others. In fact, John is really pretty ambitious. You might even say cutthroat. And you can understand why the other disciples would get a little upset with his brazen bid for power. He says, Jesus, give me whatever I want. Now, you know, that's humble enough, right? No, John wants to be in control. And, and you can't, I can't help but wonder, maybe John was a natural leader. But John's natural leadership attitude, his sinful nature's attitude, did not impress Jesus. And so Jesus rebukes John, the disciple he loves. And the rest of the disciples don't really do much better, though. They are offended. Probably some of them thought, well, I, wanted to, I want that too. How dare James and John ask? The nerve. Perhaps they had wanted to ask, but they didn't have the guts. I can't help but wonder if Peter, you know, he's kind of the head honcho of the, the disciples, often speaks up to them. I wonder if he's bothered that the youngest guy of the group was trying to pass him in the pecking order. Hey, that's my job. I'm the leader here. If you want to get my job, you've got to fight me or at least arm wrestle me for it. Um, All all the disciples thought that they were, what what they were working towards was something more like individual or uh, perhaps uh, national glory or fame. They thought that they would have power and influence. They wanted Jesus to, uh, they wanted Jesus to give them power so that they could make others, who were their enemies, do what they wanted. But that's not really what it means to follow Jesus. Following Jesus means serving others. In contrast to James and John's arrogant ambition and the rest of the apostles' outrage and jealousy, Jesus helps us reorient our whole thought process. He tells, to to, uh, paraphrase, Jesus says, You know how the world acts. And how their leaders exercise and abuse power over others. They enjoy the trappings of power. They use it to get what they want. But that's not who I am. And it's not who you will be either. 
Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man, he's referencing himself, for even I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Jesus came not for power or glory. He came to serve us. He came to love you and me. He came to lay down his life so that we might have life. That's the the purpose of our Savior. It's why he was born in the manger so that he might die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and give us everlasting life and uh, a new purpose and lease on life, a new way of living. This, uh, this world, we know, it certainly has its problems, but Jesus offers us a different way, not simply overpowering or beating the world into submission. The solution lies rather in service. First and foremost, in the Son of Man and his service to us, Uh, But in a smaller way, we get a chance to uh, partake in God's plan as we serve others away. As always, the solution is really found in our Lord, who laid down his life for others and teaches us to do likewise. In Jesus' name, amen.